All right, everyone. So we're going to go through a few additional examples using this p-value method. So remember, we're still doing our hypothesis test for the mean. So we're still using that standard normal distribution. So those z-scores, um, just instead of comparing z-scores, we're comparing probabilities, right? Because that's what my p stands for. So it's still the z-test uh, z for the mean, just a different method of doing so. Okay, so if you remember our rules, uh, my rules for this is if uh, my p-value is less than or equal to alpha, then that means we have enough evidence to re so we reject the null hypothesis. So this is the equivalent of falling in the critical region. So if my probability, if I have a smaller area than alpha, that means I'm in that critical region, that tail area. So we do have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So enough evidence in favor of the alternative. And if my p-value is greater than alpha, that's the equivalent of not being in the critical region. So we don't have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, and I wrote that up here as well, just so we can keep that in mind, but we'll do it visually as well. Okay, so if I look at this first one and I start reading here, so it tells me in a particular state, the average time spent on the internet is 12.7 hours. Okay, so for my null hypothesis, we set that equal to the 12.7. Okay, and then the, for the alternative, let's keep reading. So certain County believes their residents use the internet more than this, so more than 12.7, so greater than that. Okay, so first step, we're stating our hypotheses as usual. Okay, so when I'm sketching my curve, my distribution, let's remember our important stuff. So we have to draw our x-axis, just make sure it's not floating in the middle of nowhere. Always put zero in the middle, right? A standard normal distribution, the mean is zero. Standard deviation is one. Okay, so we see whether it's above the mean or how many standard deviations below the mean. So the middle should be zero. So positive on the right, negative on the left. Okay, and since it's greater than, we know we're putting our entire alpha just in the greater than side, so that right tail. Okay, so remember alpha is the area in the tail. So that means this space. Um, so this shaded region here, so the amount of space in this shaded region is 0.10. So don't write, put the 0.10 under the graph where the z-score goes. This you want to put an arrow pointing to the shaded region or above it, this area is 0.10. Okay, so we still need to find our z-score as normal. So with this p-value method, we're only looking at the probability or the area. So you don't need to look up that z-score. We're just going to compare whatever area I get here to that alpha and then make our decision. Okay, so it tells me from a sample of 35 people. So that's how I know to use the Z tape, uh, the normal distribution, not the T distribution. So I'm using my Z score. Okay, so get, they get a mean of 13.6. So I could do my, the value I get there minus our 12.7. So value minus the mean. And then standard deviation, it says is 2.5 hours. So 2.5 over radical, um, that 35 is my sample size. All right, so I go ahead and type this in my calculator. Um, so you see I typed it in there. So I typed this in, we get about 2.1. The 9 brings the 2 up, so about 2.13. Okay, so if I look up the area where this 2.13 would be, so it's positive, so the 2.13 z-score would be over here. So I just need to find the area um, in the tail. So if I go to my table and look up 2.13, okay, so 2.1 is here. Then I go over to three, which is this column here. So 2.13 is going to be this 4834. Okay, so the area between zero and 2.13, so this area is that um, uh, the 4834. So I have to do 0.5 minus that to get my tail. Right. So if I go to, so if I do 0.5 minus the 0.4834. That's going to be my, my p-value, my probability. So if I do that, so if I do 0.5 minus the 0.4834, we get 0.0166. Okay, so then I can compare that to alpha. So 0.01 is going to be much smaller than 0.10, right? So 0.01, so only 1%. This is 10%, so 0.1 will be 1% of this 10%, so even smaller. Okay, so since this is smaller than my alpha of 0.10, my p-value is smaller, we know to reject the null hypothesis. So that means we do have enough evidence. So is there sufficient evidence to support the county's claim? So yes, um, we have enough evidence 
to support the claim so that it is greater than 10. So we have enough evidence for this so we can reject the null hypothesis. So we have enough evidence that uh, the residents used more than this so that the mean time on the internet is higher, however you want to say that. All right, so that'll be how I would do it one. And if you do it the standard way, um, this 2.13, um, so if this is 10%, that means you can look up 0.40, which we've done before. So if you look up 0.40 in the table, just doing it the normal way. Um, so 0.40 would be the closest we get is there. So that'd be about 1.28. Okay, so that means this value, this z-score in my graph would be 1.28. And clearly this 2.13 is more than that, right? So this 2.13 is definitely in the critical region. Um, so that's so the normal way you're comparing these z-scores, you get the same answer. Um, the p-value, you're comparing the 0.0166 to the 0.10. Um, so that tells you it's in the critical region. You have 1% of the tail here, so it's definitely in the critical region. Let's look at the second one here. So go a little bit quicker now that we got the hang of it. So a study finds the average time to finish a certain rounds of golf is 296 minutes. Okay, so for my null hypothesis, we set that equal. Okay, so let's see my alternative. So an owner of a local course believes the average course is different than this. Okay, so different just means not equal to, so it's not equal to the 296. Okay, so that means in my normal distribution, draw my x-axis, put zero in the middle. Okay, so not equal to means either less than or greater than. So it could be on this less than side, or it could be on the greater than side. Okay, so either or. Okay, so we don't have to look up these z-scores because we're doing p-value methods, so we're only looking at this probability. Okay, so if I have two tails, I have to divide that 0 0.05 divided by two. So 0 0.05 divided by two would be 0 0.025. So I mean, that area is 0 0.025, that area is 0 0.025. Okay, so we calculate our z-scores normal, and then we can find the area and compare it to the 0 0.025. Okay, so it tells me from 44 golfers, once again, that's how I know to use this table, more than 30. Um, the average time is 301 minutes. So I do the 301 minus the mean, the 296. Um, standard deviation is 18 minutes, so 18 over the radical 44. Okay, so I could go ahead and type this in. So we use my fraction here. So we have the 301 minus the 296, the 18 over radical 44. Don't forget that division at the bottom. So divide that by radical 44. So this will be about 1.84. So this will be about 1.84. Okay, so let's go to our table and look up the area so we can compare it to alpha. So if I go to my table, 1.84, so 1.8 is here. So if I go over, so here's 1.8. So if I go over to the four column, that would be 4671. Okay, so if I do the 0.5 minus, let me just go straight to the calculator. So 0.5 minus the 0.4671. Okay, so that'll be, try to show the 0.5 minus the 0.4671. That'll be equal to 0.0329. Okay, so 0.0329. So um, first thing to note is that my z-score is positive. So that means we're only on the right side of the graph, right? We're more than zero, so over here. Okay, so I look at how does this compare to alpha? Well, 0.03 is greater than 0.025. Right, so remember, if my p-value is greater than alpha, so in this case, it's greater than, we don't reject, so we don't have enough evidence. And you could see what that looks like on the graph, because if I look at this right tail, so if I look at this right tail here, so this area represents 0.02, so 0.03 is clearly more. It's the 0.02 here, plus an additional 0.01, so point, plus an additional 0.01 to get up to 0.03, 2.9. So it's more areas. So it's just 0.02 plus an additional 0.01. Um, so that's clearly outside of the critical region. So 
since it's greater than my alpha, we don't reject. So we don't have enough evidence. So we don't have enough evidence or so we can't reject. So we can't reject the null. Okay, so we can't prove that it's different than 296 minutes. So we're stuck with this. We don't have enough evidence for this. So we can't reject this. We have to keep that null hypothesis so that it is equal to 296 if the question's asking for that. Um, so you could put that into words. Um, and if you do this the normal way, because remember, if alpha is 0.05, so if I have 5% in the tails, that means we're looking at the middle 95%. So clearly doing the z-score is easier, because if I have the middle 95%, this is 1.96, this is 1.96 as well. Um, so 1.84 is slightly, so 1.84 will be here, so slightly below 1.96, so that's clearly not in the critical region. So it's not far enough away to have, to be a, a significant difference. Um, so it's not in the critical region. So it's what we would expect 95% of the time, right? So areas in here. So since it's what we expect, we don't have enough evidence to contradict it. Um, so that'll be the p-value method. And you could always check your answer just like by comparing the z-scores with the traditional method, but um, the p-value method is just a different technique of method of doing it. All right, so that is it for this video.